नमस्ते एवरीवन लेट्स स्टार्ट द क्लास विद सम प्रेयर्स ओ गुरु ब्रह्मा गुरु विष्णु गुरु देवो महेश्वर गुरु साक्षात पर ब्रह्म तस्म श्री गुरव नम ओं भूभव स्वाह तत्सवेत्रवरे नयम भर्गो देव से धीमहे दियो यो न प्रचोदया अस्त माँ सदगम्या तम सो माँ ज्योतिर्गम्या मृत्योर्मा अमृत गम्या ओम स न बबतु स न भुनक्तु स वीर करवा वहि तेजस्वी नवदीतमस्तु माँ विद्वेशा वहि ओम शांति 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 ओ in our thursday's class we are studying ken upanishad and we are going to start chapter number 3 today this chapter contains a story and this story is a symbolic representation of the truths which so far has been discussed in this great upanishad and the story is that the devatas they won a victory over the demons and that victory was with the help of the supreme with the help of brahma but devatas they got blinded by their success they started gloating over their achievements and in order to bless the devatas in order to let them see what the truth is the absolute truth the brahma took a form a form of a yaksha and put this devtas to some test so that they can understand that by themselves they are limited and the same thing we should understand too it's not just for the devatas out there it's the devatas inside us also these are all devatas power to see power to speak even the power to reason power to help somebody those are the divine qualities in us but those divine qualities can manifest only when the brahman is there the atma is there so there is a in this story a big lesson for all of us those devatas they got surprised and amazed at this unusual glorious vision in the horizon they saw something beautiful something shining and they didn't know what it was they all talked to each other what is it which is so glorious to find out the identity of that vision the indra devta he sent agni first the agni dev why don't you go inquire who is up there who is so glorious so beautiful so the mighty lord of agni who can scorch the universes went up there and very arrogantly said that i am agni i can scorch anything i am so mighty the supreme lord in the form of the yaksha placed a piece of grass in front of the lord agni and requested him to reduce it to ashes if he could the agni dev he made an attempt could not even warm that blade of grass let alone burn it he got completely crushed by his failure and lord agni returned and he said he just shrugged to indra dev he said i don't know who that is 
all the devtas, they were very curious. So second time they chose Lord Vayu, Vayu Devta. They sent him on a commission to inquire and to identify that strange, glorious vision. Equally proud and vain, that Lord of Vayu, very egoistically self-conscious, he strode forward to inquire and to know this yaksha. Mightiest of the mighty, who has taken unto himself a form in time and space, that Brahma. And Yaksh asked him also, and Lord of the Vayu, disclosing his identity and status, again boasted. He said, I can toss the universes. I am the Lord of Vayu. All these planets, I can toss them like paper dolls and balloons. And the Yaksh did the same thing. He put a blade of grass in front of Lord of Vayu. He said, in my presence, can you blow this away? Lord of Vayu tried and tried, but he could not. When the guards found both Lord Agni and the Vayu failing in their commission, they made a deputation to their sovereign, Indra Devta. And accepting their request, Indra Devta, he said, okay, let me go find out who that is. When Indra Devta went there, he went there very respectfully, very humbly and the yaksh disappeared. The humility, the respect in him. But the ruler of the heavens was not despaired at the disappearance of that vision. But that really added a more earnestness to know who that yaksh was, who that vision was. So instead of turning back from his sacred quest, he strode forward, hoping, expecting, and wishing. He wanted to know. He had that deep desire to know. Where that vision was at the same place, goddess Uma, daughter of Himavan, appeared to bless Indrateva. From her, Indra Devta found out that the Yaksh was none other than the eternal non-dual truth. Just assumed a form. Assumed a form just to bless the gods by warning them against their stupidity, against their arrogance believing that they had won a victory over the demons by themselves. From this story, we must make an effort to grasp the inner essence of the narration in the Upanishads. We have a gloriously successful attempt to objectify the highly philosophical subjective narrations so far about the nature and the significance of the self in these shrutis. And in order to understand all this, the full depth of the story is just a preliminary knowledge. So that's why this is a tradition in the scriptures to add the stories so that we can think a little deeply about these truths. Because with the help of our stories, we can remember certain points. 
in the first couple of chapters we have already seen that how the unmanifest from the unmanifest to manifest emerges and then from the there the descending series of a grosser and still grosser matter comes out that's how we have the akash and the vayu and agni and jal and ultimately prithvi these five elements so from the unmanifest to the manifest and then to the grosser elements and we also notice that each element has its own special quality akash has the sound as its property without akash sound cannot travel air has a, besides the quality of the akash its own special quality of touch so air has two qualities actually if you look at it sound and the touch the subtler is a in the grosser and similarly all the subsequent elements possess not only all the qualities of the previous ones but also a special quality of their own fire in fire we have sound touch and its own special quality form in water besides the quality of fire the water taste also is there the taste is strictly belonging to element water so taste is not in the air taste is not in the space but taste is in the water and in the earth element we have all the four qualities of all the four preceding elements and it's a special quality the smell the gandh so this is what the scriptures tell us the elements are the presiding deities of the corresponding sense organs that illuminate these qualities the ear which is the apparatus to receive the akash quality cannot register the form because the form can be perceived by the eye presided over by the fire so this is like a shastrik tradition we are supposed to remember with the help of the stories or with the help of these deep messages philosophical messages but we got to see what do we do in our life with it all the devatas are here if they become arrogant and forget who the absolute is then there's a downfall if i says no i am the super the supreme without atma without brahma eyes cannot see we saw that earlier also with the help of a different story okay so this is the message in this chapter over here don't become arrogant and uma why uma god disappeared <laughs> the uma appeared it's like a the mother mother the female energy always has a softer heart don't you remember when we were little fathers were strict and we always hid behind mother when we did something wrong even now if something happens say what comes to from our mouth ma that female energy has such a great power so in the upanishads they show the same thing the ma uma appears and consoles the lord of the devatas let's start with the first verse over here 
ब्रह्म देवेभ्यो विजगे तस्ये ब्रह्म नो विजय देवा अमीयंत ते यक्षंत अस्माक अयम विजय अस्माक अयम महिमा ब्रह्म दैट मीन्स ब्रह्म देवोभ्यो फॉर द गाड्स विजिज्ञ वन ए विक्ट्री तस्य ब्रह्मनो ड्यू टू ब्रह्म इट्स बिकॉज ऑफ द ब्रह्म दे वन दैट बैटल विजय इन द विक्ट्री देवा गाड्स अमहियंत बिकेम इलेटेड ते मीन्स दे दो एव फॉर अस अलोन आई एम दिस विजय विक्ट्री अस्माकम एव ओनली टू अस आई एम दिस महिमा ग्लोरी इति मीन्स दस सो दिस इज गुरु इज सेंग गुरु इज टेलिंग द स्टोरी टू द डिसाइपल ही सेज इट इज सेड that brahm wants won a victory for the gods over the demons though the victory was due to brahm the gods became elated by it and thought to us belongs the victory to us belongs the glory see just like in mahabharat war sure pandavs won but who really won we all know that see arjun's chariot was on fire actually but it fire did not consume that chariot because lord krishna was sitting on it when the war was finished lord krishna told arjun get off first if i get off you will be consumed in the fire because it was already burnt so over here also this great devasur sangram who really won it is brahma and why brahma or the god or the absolute on the side of the devatas not on the asurs why lord krishna was on the side of the pandavas not the kauravas god is always on the side of the dharm the goodness always remember that decision we have to make do we want to be on the side of the good or side of the bad second verse since you know the story we're going to go through all these verses so that the continuation is there tat dvesham प्रादुर्भूव व्यजानत किम इदम यक्षम इति दैट द्वेशाम विजगे नोइंग वेल बिफोर देम प्रादुर्भूव अपियर्ड तत् मीन्स दैट न व्यजानत नेवर अंडरस्टूड kim means which idam this yaksham that adorable spirit yaksha iti means thus brahma knowing their vanity vanity means they are against knowing their vanity appeared before them but they did not understand who that adorable spirit was so they could not recognize see sometimes in our own arrogance we don't even understand something in front of us and this is exactly what happened to them sure they was they were mesmerized by that beautiful spirit beautiful form but they could not understand it who that is because they were full of arrogance ते अग्निम अब्रभून अब्रुवन जात वेद एतत विजानी किम एतत यक्षम इति तथा इति ते मीन्स दे अग्निम फायर अब्रुवन सेड 
जात वेद ऑल नोवर सी जात वेद इज एन अदर नेम फॉर अग्नि हायर फॉर्म ऑफ अग्नि इज कॉल्ड जात वेद ए तद दिस विजानिहि नो वेल किम मींस व्हाट ए तद दिस यक्षम द ग्रेट स्पिरिट इति दास तथा एज यू से इति दास दैट मींस दे अग्रीड दे सेड टू अग्नि दे मींस ऑल द देवताज दे सेड टू अग्नि ओ जात वेद फाइंड आउट what this great spirit is and he agreed but like they all talked they were wondering and they said okay all right let the agni because agni is all knower can find out with his radiance with his power will know it number 4 tat abhye dravat tam abhye vadat क असी इति अग्नि व अहम अस्मि इति अब्रवीत जात वेदा व अहम अस्मि इति तत् मीन्स दैट अभ्यद्रवत हेसंज तम मीन्स हिम अभ्यवदत एस्ट क मीन्स हु असी यू आर इति दस अग्निम वा वा मीन्स और अग्नि fire aham i asmi am iti means das abravit replied jat veda omniscient all lower wa means or aham i asmi am iti das agni hasten to the spirit so that means agni went there very fast quickly the spirit asked him the yaksha asked him who he was and agni replied verily i am agni the omniscient okay all know he says i am omniscient number 5 tasmin tavai kem viryam iti api idam sarvam daheyam yat idam prithivyam iti tasmin of such a nature tavyai in you kim means what viryam power iti means das api even idam this sarvam all the heyam i can burn yat idam whichever is prithivyam on the earth iti das brahm in the form of yagya yaksha so he in the form of yaksha asked him what power like what is your power of such a nature agni replied i can even burn whatsoever there is on earth so i can burn anything agni says whatever is here tasme trinam nidhau etat dah iti tat upprayay sarv javen tat nashashank dagdum sa tat ev nivritte na etat ashankam vigyatum yadetat yaksham iti tasme before him trinam a blade of grass nindhau placing etat this dah burn iti das tat means that up prayay dashed like agni dashed on it sarv javen with all his power tat means that no means not shashank kud dagdhum to burn so means he tat ev at once ni vivrite returned no means not etat this a shankam kud vigyatum to know ya detat that which is yaksham spirit iti das he brahma placed a blade of grass before him saying 
burn it. Because he said, I can burn anything on the earth. He says, burn this. Agni dashed at it with all his power. He could not burn it. So he returned to the guards saying, I could not find out who that adorable spirit was. So accepted the defeat and came back and told him, I really don't know. Verse number seven. Atvayum abruvan vayo etat vijanihi kim etat yaksham iti tatha iti. At means then vayum to the wind. Abruvan said, so that means the devtas said, vayo of the lord of the wind etat this vijanihi no kim vat etat this yaksham spirit. Iti thus, Tatha, as you say, Iti thus. That means he agreed. The Devtas then said to Vayu, O Lord of the winds, find out who this adorable spirit is. And he agreed. It's like I said, sending a second person, second power. Verse number eight. Tat abhedravat tam abhevadat ka asi iti vayuva aham asmi iti abravit matrishvahava aham asmi iti. That means that abhedravat kesanj tam him abhevadat replied. Ka means who? Asi you are. Iti das vayu. Va. Vayu, the wind, va means all. Aham I, asmi am, iti das, abravit, said. Matrishvaha, va, va means all. Matrishva is the, the trodder of the skies. Like if anything which moves in the sky. Matrishva. Aham I, asmi am, iti means das. Why you hasten to the spirit? The spirit asked him who he was and why you replied, I am why you. I am really Matrishva, the trodder of the skies. That means I cannot move in the skies very fast, wherever I want to go. Tasmin tavayikim viryam iti api idam sarvam adhdiye yat idam priti vyam iti. Tasmin. Such a Powerful Tasmina. The way in you came what? Viryam power. Iti means thus, api means even, idam this. Sarvam all, ad diye. I can blow away. Yat idam in this. Prithivyam earth. Iti means thus. The spirit asked. What power resides in you? Why are you of such a nature that you keep on moving? He said, I can blow away everything, whatever there is on earth. The why you? Verse number 10. Tasmei trinam nirdho etat adasra. Iti tat upapriyaya sarav javen tat na shanshak adatum. Sa tat eva nivrute na etat ashankam vigyatum yade tat yagyam yaksham iti. Tasme, for him, trinam, the blade of grass. Nididhav, placing, etat this, adatsva, blow away. Iti das tat this upapreyai, having approached. Sarava javen, with all his might, tat this na shashank, could not adatu to move. Second line, sir means he tat tataha eva, then only ni vivritehe returned na etat not this a shankam could. Vigyatum to find out yadetat that which is yaksham the spirit. 
iti means pass. The yaksh placed a blade of grass before him saying, blow this away. He approached it with all his power, not able to move it. So he returned to the guards and reported, I could not find out who that great spirit was. So he accepted his defeat also. Here he said, I could blow away anything, but could not even move a blade of grass himself. Number 11. At Indram Abruvan Maghuan Etat Vijanehi Kim Etat Yaksham Iti Tathaiti Tad Abhedrava Tasmat Tirodade. At means then Indram to Indra. Indra Devta Abruvan said Maghuan, the chief of gods. Etat this Vijanehi, no well. Kim means which Etat this Yaksham. The spirit, tatha, as you say, iti das. Tad means that abhedravat hastened the smart towards it, tirodadhe disappeared. Then the guards said to Indra, the chief of the guards, O Maghvan. Maghvan means the worshipful one. So he is the king of the devatas. So Bhagavan also means the possessor of the great wealth and the power. Indra. Oh Bhagavan, find out who that adorable spirit is. It's almost like a, in our own little city, we have the devtas. Who is the king of the devtas? The mind. Mind is the king of the devtas. So find out who that adorable spirit is. So you think that mind can find out? He agreed and he ascended towards the spirit, but the spirit disappeared before his vision. So there's no test to put there. Just disappeared. Sa tasmin eva kashe itriyase Ajagam bahu shobh manaha umam hemavatim taha uvachakim etat yaksham iti. This is the last verse to sum up this story. Sa means he, tasmin in the same, in the very same. Akashaho place, at the same place. Istriyam, woman. Ajagam came to know. Bahu Shobhamana, extremely charming. Uma, Hemavatim, the daughter of a Hemavan. Ta means her, her means her Uvaj said, Kim means which, etat this, Yaksham spirit, iti thus. And in that very spot, he beheld a woman, Uma, Extremely charming, the daughter of the snowy mountain, Himavan. He asked her who this adorable spirit could be. Another way we can understand this female power. Mind does not understand what is higher than the mind, the buddhi. Buddhi is a female energy. When we take that buddhi to the higher and higher stages, it becomes intuition and it knows what it is. So this whole story over here is a story of our life. And we'll see the answers to it in the next chapter also, continuation of it. But this particular chapter is just, he put a story in front of the disciple so that with the help of the story, we can understand our own questions over here. Okay, so 
let's stop it here and we can have some discussion over it. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachate Purnasi Purnamadai Purnameva Visheshate Om Shanti 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 Om. Thank you very much.